Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome here to Colorado and welcome to the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. This is an interesting one. This is actually the base Taycan Cross Turismo. Head over to Inside EVs US where we will be performing a range test on this vehicle. Uh, not sure when that will go live though. Sometimes our timing is a little weird. In this video, we are testing the charging curve of a new function for the Taycan. Now this launched about six months ago, but I've yet to actually test this out. There's a new limited DC fast charging profile to preserve the longevity of your high voltage battery. Now we already have a baseline on e-tron GT, which is the exact same charging curve that goes on Taycan with the same 93.4 kilowatt hour gross battery pack, about 82, 83 kilowatt hour usable. What I want to find out is, is the new slower charging profile actually that much slower than rocking 270 kilowatts from zero to 50% like we've seen in e-tron GT and that this car can do on the new software. Well, that's what we'll find out. <laughs> So with all of our DC fast charging tests, I have a standard procedure that I run through. I take the cars pretty far on a drive to make sure everything is warmed up. And I even DC fast charge them during the day. And that's exactly what I've done with this car. I drove it from about 50% down to 7%, DC fast charged it back up to about 40% and then drove it down to 1% where the car is right now. Right now it's running accessory power, running the car down to an indicated 0% state of charge as soon as it hits 0%, we're gonna plug it into this Electrify America DC fast charger. Now, the reason I do all this driving and everything like that is to make sure that the battery pack is at the optimal temperature for DC fast charging. Here in the case of the Taycan, I find that about 90, maybe 89 to 94 degrees Fahrenheit seems to be the sweet spot for DC fast charging. So let me click this little button away here. You can see here it says, please monitor range charge vehicle. It's at 1% state of charge. Battery packs at 92 F. That's the optimal temperature. We're just gonna let it run on its air conditioning compressor just to pull it down to 0% every time I plug in the cars. It's just as it drops from 1% down to zero. So battery packs nice and toasty. Taycan also has a feature that it will do on route battery preconditioning to a high power charger. So in the nav system, the Taycan knew that this was a 175 kilowatt or higher uh, charging power station. So if it shows 175 or higher, the Taycan will run battery preconditioning, at least in my experience. We're gonna plug it in, of course, to the CCS connection. Now, if we run the full profile, this can accept 270 kilowatts of fast charging, but I have no idea what to expect here for this sort of save the battery for long-term uh, charging situation. What I've experienced in Germany with the Taycan is when we do DC fast charging, it actually does overheat the battery if we pull in at low state of charge with a warm battery. For example, what we've experienced on the Autobahn shredding. Let's select the option here in the nav menu and then we'll plug it in. We'll go into here. We're gonna select the charging menu within the charging menu. We're gonna click the little hamburger and then we're gonna say battery friendly quick charging. The life of your battery is optimized and it may extend the quick charging process. From what I understand is this will limit the charging speed to 200 kilowatts, but we'll find out. This car also supports plug-in charge, but it's not actually set up on this particular car. So we'll just use the app to activate the charger. No issues at all. But now we have battery friendly quick charging set. We're at 1% state of charge. Miles have gone to dash dash. So it's just about to tick down to zero. As soon as it does, we'll get the cameras on and we will start the charging process. And now it's time to analyze the charging curve. Just go back a couple days from when this video was posted and I recently did a zero to 100% charging curve of the Audi e-tron GT, which is the same battery pack. I'm sure the same software. Um, we'll run a Taycan as well, zero to 100% again. I know I've already done it before. I don't remember where we posted this video. Anyway, we have the data on the Taycan, not this new saving function. The big question is, and the question you guys have been asking in the comments a ton, is how do all this quick charging of EV6, Ionic 5, GV60, Taycan, e-tron GT, Lucid Air, etc. How do all these really big high-speed power charging cars um, hold up over time? The, the answer is, I don't know. We There's not enough data. I mean, I, I've heard of one guy who has a Taycan with 50 plus thousand miles that a friend ran into. He's like, I DC charge my car all the time and never had an issue. So that's one data point. 
Um, at the end of the day, it must be hard on the battery packs. Otherwise, Porsche wouldn't use this feature. The big question for me is at what point is it like, yeah, if I own a Taycan personally, am I just going to keep the battery saving function on all the time? Uh, maybe if I DC fast charge a lot, which I do from road trips, it's really, really hard to say uh, how the long term is on these cars. Anyway, let's analyze the curve and we'll talk about some of the differences. So plugging in at 0%, here we go. Uh, initiating charging, this is all pretty normal. Nothing new here, Electrify America handshaking with the car. 31 cents a kilowatt hour, interesting. This is using Porsche's official like uh, charging thing. Goes right up to 190 kilowatts. Now in the full speed pack, we'd be at 270 at 5%. So big difference here at the beginning, but still sitting at 197, 198 kilowatts. Looks like it is capping at 200 kilowatts as we expected. We see 202 there being uh, put into the battery pack. The EA side showing what's delivered. The car side is showing what's going into the battery pack. So the higher the charging power, the higher discrepancy you'll have, I squared R. For more current, you'll have more heat loss. So that's there's always more losses at higher charging power. Also, the car has to run air conditioning pumps, coolant pumps, et cetera and this is all accounted for here. So we're kind of just sitting around 200 kilowatts to 23% already, 25%, we're still sitting at 200 kilowatts. The big question for me is, is it gonna taper earlier or is it just going to say, we'll sit at 200 kilowatts till we match the original charging profile? But it's not doing that. At 30%, it's already ramping down. And this is great because just capping at 200 kilowatts doesn't really solve the problem. At high stage of charge, you're still gonna be stressing the battery pack the same if you took it that way. We're down to 165 kilowatts at 35, 36%. I feel like this is still better than most cars, by the way, just normally. Uh, 150 kilowatts at about 40% state of charge. But what this is doing is it's altering the entire curve, pulling the C rate down across the pack, which is awesome. This is what's really gonna help long-term longevity. So 40%, we're at 144 kilowatts. Look, that's still not slow. 12 minutes we're into this thing. We've added 38 kilowatt hours, crazy. Uh, I mean, look, this is in the battery saving function. Now there are other cars that will have battery saving function. I don't know if Lucid will, I know EQS does, and EQS limits to 100 kilowatts. They call it eco charging. And you can also set a maximum charging limit. It's pretty hard to set a max charging limit in the Taycan. To be honest, I'd really love to see them add a slider and say just no more than 80% all the time. That's how I would do it. 50%, we're at 132 kilowatts, but still, 15 minutes, zero to 50% versus 10 minutes, zero to 50%. So it's, that's still pretty good. <laughs> I think it may have been even 14 minutes, zero to 50%. Yeah, Etron GT was exactly like 10 minute, 40 second from zero to 50%. And obviously it's heating everything up, cooling, you know, car has to run cooling fans here. The car didn't, didn't even kick on fans. Battery temperature barely raised at all. It just did not care. Um, weird little anomaly there. It looks like we dropped down to like 80 kilowatts back up. I don't know what happened, but that was odd. Still sitting at 120 kilowatts here at 63%. You'll see the numbers go around quite a bit. And this is because it's kicking on air conditioning, uh, cooling pumps or fans or things like this. Uh, inside the car. 56 kilowatt hours in 21 minutes. I think Taycan was rated for 22 minutes, uh, five to 80% out of the box. So here we went from zero to nears makes no difference, 70%. Not a big difference there in the same amount of time with the slow charging profile. If you know anything about Porsche, you know they underrate absolutely everything. And then of course it just rockets up. We're still doing north of 100 kilowatts at 70, 72%, 201 miles indicated. By the way, this car's EPA is 215 and I was driving it hard. And you'll notice that it full charges, I think to 270 miles. Tycons are just underrated in the EPA cycle. It's a thing. So now that we dropped under 100 kilowatts, we get tenths of a kilowatt. I love how accurate Porsche is with everything. 76% uh, state of charge, still doing 94 kilowatts. That's crazy. Just as a reference, I always mention Model 3, Model Y, long range packs, the 70-ish kilowatt hour uh, packs. Those will do 50 kilowatts at 80%. So even with battery saving, I guess this is just like Porsche's like, we don't care. Here we are 80% at 84 kilowatts. 30 minutes dead from zero to 80%. So that's a half hour charge, which most cars 
can't even do 30 minutes, zero to 80%. Most automakers quote from five or 10%. Some even quote from 20%. Got those sneaky ones. I won't mention who. You'll know if you know. And you really just got to like, I mean, this is just a crazy charging car. One of the best things of Tycon, of course, is high speed efficiency. This car at high speeds, insanely efficient. Uh, if you take a look at our out of spec motoring road trips, you'll see we're just blasting down the autobahns at max speed, 155, 160 miles an hour, still doing well with range. And then this crazy charging curve, 270 kilowatts, zero to 50 percent. Here, though, I think I would personally keep my car in this charging profile most of the time. You know, when I plug in a chargers, we got to let the dogs use the restroom. We got to do everything, even though I always push for faster charging because I think it's great to see the technology increase and I want the fastest charging possible. There are occasions, I'd say at least 50% of the time where I'm like, oh, I'll just plug in. We have time. There's also occasions where I'm like, I have five minutes, I'm late for a flight, get the juice in this car and let's rock and roll. 90%, still 70 kilowatts, that's insane. Uh, 40 minutes, we've added 82, 83 kilowatt hours. I mean, that's pretty much a full usable capacity. The thing to keep in mind though, of course, is that's charging power delivered from Electrify America and the car, of course, is consuming some power. Although I bet the usable capacity on this car is a bit more than the quoted 82, 83 kilowatt hour. I don't know where that number is coming from, but that's a pretty big discrepancy. We can always do some tests. Just dipping under 50 kilowatts at 95%. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Now, up top here, it is seemingly close to the original charging profile. So I guess they don't mind pushing it there. 37 kilowatts here at 96%. Uh, you can see the estimated range, 270 miles of Gesso meter range based off of driving history. By the way, driving hard. It's no secret I'm a big Tycon fan. It's a no secret this car's a monster. I love a fast wagon and I especially love a fast charging wagon. And yeah, this is just something truly special. My opinion, just keep it in the battery saving function. If it's your car, you're gonna keep it for a while. May as well save it some wear and tear. When you're in a rush, uncheck it, get the max charging speed and go. I'm really curious if you know a battery expert, if you are a battery expert, um, please reach out to me and let's geek out about cell chemistry, temperatures, and longevity especially. It's really hard for me to gauge the longevity of these battery packs because I usually only have cars to test for a week or two. And then of course I can only buy so many, but I've put a hundred thousand miles now on this model three. We're gonna do a whole um, little degradation test, updates, costs, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, I'd really love to have a battery expert, maybe on our weekly out of spec podcast, airing live every Thursday morning or Wednesday. If you're interested in our Patreon, we have one in the link, you get it a day early. We'd love your support. 100% uh, state of charge right here, approached absolutely amazing, crazy fast, well under an hour, zero to 100%, even with this battery saving function. I mean, this is just a whole nother world here, 278 miles projected. That's crazy. Look, I don't know if you can get any better than that. Is there a better charging EV currently on sale in our market in the US than the Taycan in the slow function? I don't think there is. Uh, certainly Model S, 3, X, and Y all peak at 250 kilowatts, but I think the overall curve is still slower to add that much energy than the Taycan and battery saving function. That's crazy. Of course, Ionic 5, EV6, GV60 of the three that I mentioned aren't for sale in our market at the time of this recording. This video, I don't expect Porsche to really adjust their charging curve here for the battery saving function. Anytime in the future, I'm sure they just kind of set it. This is super safe. Let it ship. Uh, so this this should be relevant, you know, a long time into the future. This car did have WMA6, I think is what it's called, which is the new software uh, installed on the car, which is when you get the battery saving function, which is, uh, you know, there was 2022 model year updates, but this car has all of the battery functions from the 2022 uh, updates into it. So it was about as new as it could get, about as relevant as a test that we could have. And the car was super fresh with about 2000 miles on the clock and uh, relatively easy miles. Even though this is one of the cars we took off-roading, um, it really wasn't fast charged all that much. So 
There you have it, battery saving function. I'd love to see more EVs incorporate this. There's also another side of the argument, which is DC fast chargers. You wanna get in and get out as soon as possible. I think the charging providers would prefer this though, because this should help with their demand chargers. What do you think? Do you think we just make DC fast charging as fast as possible, stress the packs and get people out of the stations to the next one? Or this is still kind of fast enough where it's like, you're only there for a half hour at most, and then you unplug and leave? What do you think? This still charges faster than anything, so it doesn't seem like it's an issue for me, but as stations become more crowded, I'm curious your opinions on this here. So anyway, there you have it, the Tycon charging zero to 100% in battery saving function. I think it's like optimized for battery life, something like this. And let me know what you think. We'll have it, of course, an article on insideevs.com, plotting the charging curves, comparing this to the normal Tycon's curves. So keep an eye out for that. There's usually a couple week delay until Mark can get the articles done and uh, appreciate your support. Patreon's in the description. We're gonna post to that more often. We've expanded that out of motoring to the rest of our channels. Can't wait to show you guys what we're doing there. And uh, yeah, you make a lot of stuff possible for us. So thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>